comeback and a controversy in Kazakhstan. This is a saiga antelope. It's considered a critically endangered species by the International Union for Conservation of Nature. Illegal hunting, disease, and the lack of water once brought them to the brink of extinction. At one point earlier this century, a Kazakh conservationist said there were only about 2,000 saigas left in her country. Now, their numbers are closer to 2 million. Kazakhstan has worked to reduce poaching. The animals don't have many natural predators here. They reproduce quickly, with female saigas usually giving birth to twins, and they can do that yearly. All of these are reasons why there are so many saigas here that Kazakhstan is moving to capture or kill hundreds of thousands of them. It's a difficult decision in a country where the antelopes are respected and loved by the people. But the government says the saigas are taking water from livestock and causing extensive damage to the nation's agricultural industry. Welcome to the world from A to Z with Carl Azus. That's me with the A and the Z. It's great to see you this Thursday. On yesterday's show, we told you three of the things that U.S. President Joe Biden had hoped to accomplish on his trip to Israel. There was a fourth. He'd originally been scheduled to meet with Arab leaders in Jordan to discuss ways of preventing the Israel-Hamas war from becoming a bigger conflict in the region. Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas, who was also scheduled to be there, had already said he wouldn't attend, and then Jordan's government canceled the summit altogether as it supports Palestinians and blames Israel for the violence in the Middle East. President Biden drew attention to the suffering of Palestinian civilians and said America would send $100 million worth of humanitarian assistance to Gaza, but he also said America would continue to support Israel. I come to Israel with a single message. You're not alone. You are not alone. Later this week, I'm going to ask the United States Congress for unprecedented support package for Israel's defense. It's not clear how easy it'll be for him to get that package through Congress, though. For one thing, there's some disagreement in the Senate over President Biden's nominee for U.S. Ambassador to Israel, former Treasury Secretary Jack Lew. For another, there's disagreement in the House of Representatives over who will lead the chamber. Republicans control the House, but haven't decided on a speaker. Representative Steve Scalise, a Republican from Louisiana, withdrew from the race for that position after his support fell short last week. Representative Jim Jordan, a Republican from Ohio, is the current nominee, but he hasn't been able to get the votes needed to become speaker. A small number of Republicans joined all Democrats in ousting former Speaker Kevin McCarthy from the job earlier this month, so that's kept things tied up in the House. Inside the Cannon Rotunda, an office building of Congress, hundreds of protesters demonstrated yesterday. They were calling for a ceasefire in Gaza, an end to Israeli airstrikes and counterattacks on Hamas following that group's recent terrorist attacks on Israelis. Capitol Police arrested a number of the protesters as demonstrations are not allowed inside congressional buildings. A word of knowledge. Which of these events took place in 1962? Fall of Saigon, China's Cultural Revolution, Cuban Missile Crisis, March on Washington. It was in October of 1962 that the Cuban Missile Crisis took place. The Cuban Missile Crisis brought the United States and the Soviet Union to the brink of nuclear war, and it started on this island just 90 miles away from the United States. By 1960, Cuba's new communist leader, Fidel Castro, had formed an alliance with the Soviet Union. That was America's rival during the Cold War, so the U.S. broke off all relations with Cuba. And in the early days of the Kennedy administration in 1961, the U.S. support for an invasion of Cuba triggered events that led to the crisis. The threat lasted 13 days in October of 1962, but its story goes back to 1961 and a covert operation led by the CIA to invade Cuba to overthrow communist dictator Fidel Castro. That failed and Castro appealed to Russia's Soviet Union for weapons to protect Cuba from the United States. Russian Premier Nikita Khrushchev saw an opportunity to solve a problem of his own. Four years earlier, U.S. missiles had been installed in U.S. allied Turkey. So Khrushchev saw the Cuban request as a way to place Soviet missiles close to the United States. Khrushchev and Castro struck a deal. 
During the summer of 1962, the Soviets began secretly shipping missile parts and personnel to Cuba aboard cargo ships. The CIA got suspicious, and after examining high-altitude photographs of Cuba, they discovered evidence of missile bases under construction. That prompted President Kennedy to find a diplomatic way to respond to the threat. He started by addressing the nation. Within the past week, unmistakable evidence has established the fact that a series of offensive missile sites is now in preparation on that imprisoned island. The purpose of these bases can be none other than to provide a nuclear strike capability against the Western Hemisphere. Then he penned a letter to Khrushchev, warning about the dangers of nuclear war. And Khrushchev agreed to pull the missiles out of Cuba, as long as the United States agreed to announce it would never attack Cuba. By the 21st of November, the Soviets had taken all missiles and nuclear bombers out of Cuba. And the following April, Kennedy pulled American missiles out of Turkey. And the world breathed a giant sigh of relief. On this date in world history. On October 19, 1781, British General Charles Cornwallis surrendered to American General George Washington, ending the Battle of Yorktown in the Revolutionary War. This defeat of Cornwallis' army was momentous because it marked the last major battle of the conflict. America had essentially won the war and its independence from Great Britain. In 1789, John Jay was sworn in as the United States' first Chief Justice. He'd previously written some of the Federalist Papers and served as U.S. Secretary of Foreign Affairs. Chief Justice Jay went on to serve at the Supreme Court until 1795 when he resigned so he could become Governor of New York. And in the Middle East in 2005, the trial of former Iraqi President Saddam Hussein began. He'd pled not guilty to murdering 148 Iraqis in 1982, but Hussein was convicted and executed in 2006 for crimes against humanity. Rockets and scouts of the mascots of the schools we're virtually visiting today, and I'm pretty sure that Eddieville, Blakesburg, Fremont Junior Senior High School just took the superlative for longest name we've announced. It's great to see Miss Leddington's students in Eddieville, Iowa. From there, we're scouting out Mr. Kane and his students at Lewis and Clark Middle School. Fantastic to see all y'all in Billings, Montana, the treasure state. A weird and wild vintage pizza delivery vehicle going up for auction could serve up a slice of nostalgia for one lucky bidder. This is the 1985 Domino's Pizza Triton A2 delivery car. Originally commissioned by the pizza chain's founder, the vehicle was designed with custom pie warmers on board and boasted an impressive 80 miles per gallon. Only 10 Tritons were ever made, and only a few remain today. This one is set to go up for auction in November, and although Meekum Auctions hasn't yet released an expected price, the last one was sold by Bonhams for nearly 45 grand. So, if you have a taste for a cheesy 80s vibe and you've got the dough, there's no topping this age-old space-age pizza mobile. It's like a cargarita pizza. Rainy Supreme with arugula, a lot of special options that didn't leave much room for improvement. When you gotta bake good time with jalapeno, no time to lose, you've got the pepperoni need for speed and never sausage a cheesy ride that critics might call half-baked as they are to choke on your dust while you pull a meal on wheels out of the oven and out of the parking lot and pesto. You're baking on time delivery that spinaturally avoids the noise. I'm Carl Azus, delivering fresh puns on the world from A to Z, and it would mean the world to us to see you again tomorrow.